Three killings in two different counties. Monday afternoon, Horry County police were focused on this apartment building in Atlantic Beach. A day earlier, investigators say they found 52-year-old Natasha Stevens dead at a home outside Conway. They say 25-year-old Matthew Duet shot her. Roughly two hours later, Richland County deputies found two people dead at a home on Green Springs Drive in Northeast Columbia. The coroner say husband and wife, James and Gloria Duet were shot to death. Deputies spent the day Monday collecting evidence while shocked neighbors looked on. It's just like nerve-wracking because it's just like anything can happen at any time. You just never know. Matthew Duet is suspected in all three deaths. Gators say he is related to all three victims. Watch Fox News has also learned James Duet was an Atlantic Beach City Councilman. Police were hauling away a car registered to him from this scene in Atlantic Beach. People who live in the Northeast Columbia neighborhood where the Duets were found are struggling with the deaths. I saw him a few days and then it's ago and now it's like, oh, like something crazy just like happened. It's just like so heartbreaking. A police investigation spanning across the state from Horry to Richland County. We've learned that an Horry County man, 25-year-old Matthew Allen DeWitt, is in custody and charges against him are pending in the shooting deaths of three family members. Police say two were shot in Richland County, the third here in Horry County. ABC 15's Emma Parkhouse is working for you tonight. She joins us live in the studio to break down all the details we've learned about this case today. Emma. Andrew, Horry County Police took Matthew DeWitt into custody around 225 this afternoon in Atlantic Beach. He is now being held at J. Rubin Long Detention Center just outside of Conway. Police were actively investigating the DeWitt apartment complex in Atlantic Beach for several hours this afternoon after serving a search warrant. And tonight, we also learned more details on the three family members who have been allegedly shot by DeWitt. According to Horry County Police on Sunday, they responded to a call for a death investigation on the 4000 block of Highway 319. Investigators officially ruled this a homicide. The Horry County coroner identified the victim as 52-year-old Natasha Stevens. Also on Sunday near Columbia, the Richland County Sheriff's Office says they responded to a wellness check at a home. This is where they found Gloria DeWitt and James DeWitt II shot to death inside of that home. While we were on the scene this afternoon, just before 4 p.m., a Kia Soul was towed off of the DeWitt apartment property. And according to property tax records, or county tax records rather, James DeWitt II is the most recent person to have paid the vehicles for the taxes on that car. And the Atlantic Beach Police Chief has confirmed that James DeWitt II is an Atlantic Beach Town Councilman. The Chief also says that Gloria DeWitt was the Councilman's wife. This is a recording shared with ABC 15 News after a FOIA request. It's a late September meeting. That's the result of the Appeal Board's previous meeting. In that meeting, Grissett Lake Landing developer Don Gogwin requested the Appeals Board grant him what's called a variance, or pass, from following the county's new flood damage prevention law. I was promised it would be grandfathered almost all the way to the very tail end until it the, the, the went into effect. And it just feels like we got, we got I, I think we got hoodooed on it. I really do. Godwin's project predates the 2021 law, but about 50 homes haven't been built yet along the flood-prone Waccamaw River. Under the law, he's required to build those homes with an extra three feet of what's called freeboard. The engineer for the project, Steve Powell, explains to the board why that's a problem for them. You're asking Great Southern Homes to spend thirty dollars to $40,000 of additional cost to elevate it in the air, three feet, and, and, and in so doing, make it both less marketable, uh, less appealing to buyers, and less successful. Godwin and his attorney argue since they elevated the Homes Foundation years ago, they applied and received a letter of map renewal from FEMA, moving those plots out of the flood zone. He argues that the additional locally recognized flood zone should not apply to him. In the end, the board felt the hardship on his investment was enough to grant the exception. Emily Nellermo is an attorney for the SC Environmental Law Project and questions the board's decision. It seems that the board considered a slight economic hardship of the developer over all these important concerns. She's talking about concerns over public safety and based on the county attorney's own words in the recent meeting, the consequences of approving this exception were not relayed to board members. You're asking a lot of questions, but you don't have all the information. You're, you're, you're drawing conclusions prematurely. According to local law, the board granted the exception against the ordinance's rules, which state variances shall not be issued for unpermitted development with the developer admitting none of the homes have permits pulled for them yet. After the planning director spoke with the state flood office, he learned that the board's decision to grant an exceptional hardship to the developer because of cost and looks will not hold up. FEMA says you should not grant a variance. 
in that situation. State insurance officials say the safety of the public matters more and that if FEMA were to review the homes once developed under this variance, quote, suspension or probations from the National Flood Insurance Program would be a possibility. We're trying to protect the that's why the September meeting happened. In it, the board decides to reconsider their decision, not before, though, the developer's attorney bashes the county legal counsel. This is the shadiest, most egregious thing I've ever seen. Alan Hutto with the Builders Company argues in the meeting that if they knew this decision would hurt thousands of residents, the conversation would have been different. If staff had come to us and told us that, you know, there's going to be massive, massive countywide impacts from this, Look, we would have been happy to have that discussion. The county's floodplain manager estimates nearly one and a half million dollars may be lost in discounts for homeowners if FEMA decides the development or board decision violates the standards. Trapper Fowler with the Coastal Conservation League says it's vital that the county stops the appeal from taking effect. This would just set things back in the opposite direction. So, um, you know, we really appreciate the county sticking to it. Now, when this happens, an appeals board makes a decision against the county's interest. Usually the county files an appeal or injunction in court to stop it all. That's not the case here. The developer has filed an appeal against the board's decision to reconsider that approval. For the last month, I reached out to the developer and engineer, as well as several county council members and the county attorney's office. The builders have not returned my messages, and just this week, everyone from the county told me they cannot comment on the board's actions because the appeal is now heading to court. Here's some perspective. If the county was kicked out of the National Flood Insurance Program community rating system, thousands of homeowners here could lose federal flood insurance options and subsidized discounts that come with them. To fix that, the county could be required to buy out these homes within this proposed development. The houses, the county officials say, are retailed right now at over $320,000, which would cost more than $15 million for the county to rectify it all. The developer claims the current cost to raise the homes would be a little over $4 million. Here's what one flood victim says about the potential of losing the National Flood Insurance Program within the county. When a, a flood comes and the next flood will come, that they won't be able to get help from FEMA and they'll have to get private flood insurance instead of through the FEMA program. And it's, it's just really gonna hurt a lot of people. Court records show that the county was served with the appeal notice today. It's not clear if the appeals board will meet again this month, though. That was the intention of board members, as they said in their last meeting. With the decision now being challenged in court, though, it's likely the county will hold off on another meeting.